Okay, well, hello and welcome. My name is Asuka Hisa and I am the Director of Learning and Engagement at the ICALA. Thanks for tuning in to our program, which features uh, Harold Mendez, Jeff Parker, and the premiere of a 30 minute music uh, video of music that was filmed within the exhibition, Harold Mendez, Let Us Gather in a Flourishing Way the first Los Angeles solo presentation of the artist, Harold Mendez. From the exhibition description, I can tell you a little bit about Harold's work. Mendez is an artist who works between photography and sculpture. He explores the tension between fiction and truth, visibility and absence, with an interest in how constructions of history and geography shape our sense of self. A first-generation American of Mexican-Colombian descent, his work often considers the transnational experience, ritual, and cultural history. The show was organized by Jamila James, ICALA curator. If you're in LA, you can come and view the exhibition by appointment. And if you're somewhere else, or even if you're in LA, you can view an interactive virtual reality capture of the show on our website. It will be physically at our museum through January 10th, and then the show will travel and open at the ICA at Virginia Commonwealth University in February. A little background story, this is how it happened. In short, uh, Harold Mendez told me about Jeff Parker. Who is Jeff Parker? So now it's time for his bio. Jeff Parker is recognized as one of contemporary music's most versatile and innovative electric guitarists and composers creating works that exploit the contrary relationships between tradition and technology, improvisation and composition, and the familiar and the abstract. He is a longtime member of the influential indie band Tortoise. He has been an associate member of the Association of the Advancement of Creative Musicians since 1995. And as a prolific band leader and collaborator, Jeff has appeared on over 140 commercial recordings. Currently, focuses on music production, small ensembles, and solo performance. Another fun fact is that both Jeff and Harold moved to Los Angeles from Chicago. So an invitation was extended to Jeff Parker to perform. And he visited the exhibition, he met Harold, and he accepted. And then we had to figure out how this performance was going to happen. In lieu of a live event, which we cannot have, we opted to record the performance as documentation of a moment where music and art meet and resonate with each other. We must give an appreciative shout out to Stephen Schauer, who produced the video and made it into a beautiful piece for viewing and listening. Special thanks to Anthony Puglisi of Central Sound for mastering and Chris Orr for assistant camera work. We will begin this program with Harold Mendez and Jeff Parker talking together about the symbiosis of art and music and Jeff's work. And we will then launch the video for a viewing and listening session that will last about 30 minutes in four distinct sections. And we'll regroup and talk a little more about this project and then open it up to some questions from the audience. Please type your questions in the Q&A box, not the chat box. This program is being recorded and we will be streaming the video via this Zoom platform. After today, the video of the performance alone will be available on YouTube. So please subscribe to ICALA's YouTube channel and share the video. For more information about ICALA, you can join our mailing list or follow us on social media. So now I'm going to give it over to Harold and Jeff. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Asuka. I appreciate it. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning in on a you know, Thursday afternoon, evening. Uh, I want to just start off by you know, thanking the um, ICA here in LA for the exhibition, of course, um, and Elgood, uh, of course, Jamila James, amazing uh, friend and curator, um, Asuka for really making this happen. Um, of course, Stephen for documenting the video, of course. Uh, Jeff for, for agreeing to participate with this. So this is really, really exciting for me. Um, so, you know, Jeff, um, you know, I've been a longtime fan um, and, you know, we, we met briefly in Chicago at one point or another. Uh, of course, I was familiar with your, your music through, you know, Tortoise, um, the experimental, um, you know, doing stuff at Experimental Sound Studio. 
um, Exploding Star Orchestra, um, you know, DJing at bars or, um, you know, pulling on, you know, live shows with uh, the, um, uh, you know, many, many bands that you've played with before. And so uh, the music's always really kind of resonated with me. And, you know, when I got the opportunity to um, have this exhibition here in Los Angeles, uh, one of the first things that I thought about was like, um, you know, I think as artists, you know, we have a kind of constellation of our own, um, you know, people we talk to all the time, makers, thinkers, writers, you know, poets, um, you know, our family, the whole kind of community, right? The, the big kind of constellation. Um, and, you know, there have been a lot of things that have been kind of parallel to uh, your music that I've been really drawn to. So uh, it seemed like a really great opportunity to invite you to something like this. So I was like, let me roll the dice and see if Jeff is down to, <laughs> to, to be part of this. So, you know, if I can ask you a question um, and, you of know, course. Um, but yeah, if, if, if you can just maybe share a little bit, you know, why you were interested in or agreed to kind of participate in it, um, uh, in, in, in sort of, uh, improvising, um, in relationship to my work. So maybe take it. Um, from. I mean, I remembered meeting you and you're just like super dope dude. And I was kind of like, uh, yeah, it'd be cool to do something. And then I went and saw the work. And it was just really striking and uh, like profound, um, just like direct. I mean, it's such like soulful work. Um, and I was just really excited about it. And then also to just sonically uh, explore the acoustics of the space, you know? I mean, I was really excited about the whole thing, you know? It was, um, Amazing. I'm, uh, thank you for asking me to participate. No, no, for sure. I mean, uh, for those tuning in, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, folks that are familiar with your work, so I don't have to, you know, you know, preach to them. But for those that, you know, maybe not aren't that familiar with your work, you know, you're a, a real uh, master. I mean, this is really beautiful work that you make. And um, there's a, a real it, it, I feel like when I'm listening to your to your your music that you're really kind of pushing um, a lot of things, and, and I'm I'm really glad that you brought up this word atmosphere. Um, and I think maybe probably prior to the to the beginning of um, well, I would say maybe at the beginning of the year. I remember you know you you have a kind of a set where you play at ETA here, which is a bar in, up in Highland Park in Los Angeles. Um, and I briefly talked to you about the sound piece that I was working on developing and thinking about. You know how does a how does a a voice or how does someone's speech occupy a space um, uh, in a kind of a, in a physical way. And, um, um, and I, I, I like that there's, there's a kind of atmospheric quality um, also in, in, in a lot of your work, there's a, there's a real kind of complexity to it. Um, so yeah, what was it like for you to, to you know, use the, the ICA in a way to really kind of amplify and, and, and use the space as a, as a kind of a space to make uh, these sounds are kind of jump back and forth between things. Uh, I mean, it was, I was, was definitely playing off the acoustics of the room. Um, you know, I mean, Stephen also, uh, he also recorded it. I mean, and for people who are listening, the, uh, all the reverb that they're hearing is it's ambient. It's, it's natural. It's not like, uh, it's not um, electronically reproduced. So it's just kind of, you know, playing, I play and hear the sound kind of resonate in the space. And uh, I just kind of go into that. I mean, that's something I've been really interested in exploring. I mean, for the last probably handful of years, I mean, I'm very interested in in all the ways that music can exploit space and also create space for people who listen to it. You know, like, and by space, I mean, you know, mental space, emotional space, intellectual space. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Space space exploitation 
<laughs> yeah, I, no, I, I really dig that. And, um, um, you know, I like that idea of, um, you know, that you mentioned that there's a kind of a uh, intellectual, but also very kind of emotional aspect to the music. And I think that, you know, particularly, I think it's been a really tough year for all of us, right? And there's been so many, you know, kind of changes, right? And, um, but I think for me, you know, music is also a really, really important thing in my practice and in my daily life. I think like, um, and I really love talking about music. I have a lot of friends who are real music heads. Um, you know, I, I love when we can kind of nerd out on just, you know, music and, you know, liner notes and all those kinds of things. Um, but, you know, there's, you know, music really kind of sticks with you in a lot of ways. And I think, you know, this, this year, I feel like that's the thing that I've, I've, I've drawn to the most, uh, more than I think, you know, I would say visual art that's been you know, kind of literature and poetry and of course music. Um, but I want to just reference this image or this album, um, which is your first solo album, right? From 2016 on Aramite Records, which is Slight Freedom. Um, yes. And um, this is actually, um, you know, a project that, you know, you had been thinking about for some time, right? Uh, kind of. I mean, I, I was pretty intimidated by the, by the idea of uh, making a solo recording and even playing solo. Um, because you've been play, playing collaboratively and in, in, in groups for, for well over, you know, what, 15, 20 years? Oh, man, probably more than that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, it's playing solo. It's pretty, uh, it can be pretty overwhelming. But once I kind of let myself settle into it, I, I realized that there was a lot of freedom in it. I mean, one... It's kind of all, of, it's all you, really. I mean, how much of you, you, uh, you choose to include in that or, or whatever, everything else. I mean, it's kind of like, I tend to look at everything in the beginning, everything is just sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way your sound is resonating through the space, I decide to like, you use that too, as something to play with, you know, but this is an album, man. I mean, I made it a uh, slight freedom uh, when I had moved out to Los Angeles mm -hmm. and I didn't really know any musicians here. I didn't know any people. So during the day, um, while my partner was at work, I rented out a rehearsal space and I would just go in there and practice by myself for like a few hours every day. And I kind of came up with this repertoire of, of like solo material. And yeah. I was like, oh, well, I got this stuff. And people started to ask me to do some gigs. And uh, that was, and rather than bring in a group, I just started to experiment and perform some of this solo repertoire that I had come up with. Well, and, I mean, uh, oh, sorry. Oh, no, no. It, and then it just, it culminated in me making this album. I mean, it's a, it's an incredible album. Good luck to those trying to find that that thing. It's like not available. I mean, I've I've definitely searched. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, the song "Slight Freedom." Um, I mean, "Super Rich Kid," which which is an interpretation that you did of um, um, uh, Frank Ocean's uh, track, which is really beautiful. It's, there's these kind of sounds of sirens, you know, and sort of the window sounds like it's open, and these really kind of atmospheric quality coming in. Uh, and of course, Mains, it's something that you've done before with uh, Chad Taylor, uh, which is one of my favorites. Um, and then you kind of, you know, moved on to, to this, which is um, the new breed, uh, which is um, in, in dedication to your father who um, owned a clothing store uh, called the new breed, right? And this is also entitled after your, uh, your, your new band now. Um, and this came out in 2016, an international anthem, which is a, really different kind of album than the first one. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, that's kind of me um, trying to make sense of my interest in production, like kind of hip hop production and, uh, and improvising and composing. I just kind of um, just wanted to mash all those things together in kind of my own way. You know, it's, I mean, it's not, by all means, it's not like a new, I mean, people have been kind of experimenting with that stuff 
for decades. But uh, I don't know. I just wanted to to kind of compose a suite of music and present it in that way. And you know, it became a tribute to my father because he passed away while I was making the record. Right. Um, yeah. And what's what's interesting <laughs> what's interesting about this album too, though, is that um, your your daughter closes the album. Uh, and it's the, it's the, um, um, so I, I like this idea that you're also kind of folding in the family, you know, either through, you know, kind of a history, um, either by titling it or, you know, using it as a kind of impetus to kind of make the, the album in one way, but then also, you know, um, having your daughter, um, you know, sing over, you know, one of the, the closing tracks uh, or the closing song on this, um, and, yeah. which is a really, really amazing, beautiful song. Um, and, you know, and then, of course, um, you know, I want to move to just reference this, which is your most recent, um, the suite for Max Brown. Um, and this is sort of, um, from what I know, is that um, um, it's in, you know, um, an ode to, to your mother, uh, Maxine. Uh, yes. And your daughter opens the album um, with, by singing over it on this album. Is that, that's right, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. 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 So I like this idea, you know, I mean, here's this other kind of parallels that, you know, of course, you know, so I'm in my work, I'm interested in, you know, history and, and you know, my own kind of uh, geography of where, you know, what or what my makeup is in terms of my family and, you know, what um, interests me, but, you know, also using um, some of that in the work. And, you know, in the exhibition, there's two works. One of them is titled after my dad and one of them is titled after my mom. And so right. I like that there are these kind of parallels uh, in that way. Um, uh, by the way, for all of those who, uh, who you know, of you who are tuning and don't have this album or others, you should definitely get these. These are amazing, really beautiful, warm, and mesmerizing albums. Uh, and there's just so many Thanks. songs on this that are are just incredible. Um, um, yeah, could you say a little bit about this? Um, you know, you made these. You kind of had these different kind of conditions for the new breed, where you had you know, collected all these kind of samples and music that you had, put that together, right. stitched all that stuff together. But this was actually quite different, right? Uh, it was a little different. It was, um, I mean, I've been kind of, uh, um, dealing more with like longer, like uh, more stagnant kind of uh, things, repetitive things, um, long, like a lot of drones. Um, but the, I mean, the process that I made uh, Sweet for Max Brown is, is very similar to how I made the new breed, which was why I, I subsequently named the project, the new Jeff Parker and the new breed, because it's it's kind of a way of that I come up with to, um, to make music, which is, you know, dealing with samples, samples and, um, and kind of melding it together with improvising and composing. Um, and I figured, you know, I mean, I, I knew that I wanted to make something for my mom because, uh, you know, the new breed was so well received and I was, I, uh, I wish that my father would have been able to like, to like see it. Yeah. And um, so I decided to make something for her while she's still here, you know? Yeah. And just that, that thing and like, you know, the technique and the dedications and like, you know, it's mo it's a lot of the same people on both albums and, uh, it just tied the whole thing together, you know. Now it's it's kind of like the two of the two records are like kind of part of a suite of of music. Yeah, I mean they're really amazing kind of companion uh, companions in that way. Um, I, mean, I I love listening to them from you know one to the next. I think there's a real uh, uh, nice bridge between the two. Um, and um, yeah, they're, they're, they're really just warm. And, and I think that, you know, I don't know, when I listen to them, I just sort of feel like um, 
you're you're in the right kind of company you know like you you're you're hanging out with the the like a really amazing group of folks listening to this and uh particularly like the the, the video for for the last track on this album is really really fun to watch and and just turn was, up yeah thanks yeah, yeah that was done by uh michael patrick avery who's a great um super creative um guy i mean he does all kinds of stuff he's a great musician and makes films and invents stuff and like builds instruments like he's like really really great yeah so um before we jump into the the video um one of the things that i just wanted to bring up was that i know in the liner notes um for for this album you you mentioned something about um you know trying to kind of surprise yourself um in 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 your music and i i really respect that and i i think um um it's really important to do that as an artist especially um when you're given a kind of space and thinking about like what can you learn from trying something new um so after making you know these kind of you know three albums these solo projects uh, how are you sort of finding ways to kind of surprise your, surprise yourself right now i know it's been a tough year but uh i mean i've kind of i've gotten deeper into um making music uh alone here at home mm. i mean more in the kind of engineering like acoustic excuse me the scientific aspect of it mm -hmm. um i mean i'm pretty far immersed in that right now um and that's i mean i really don't know much about that stuff and that's kind of how i'm surprising myself now in terms of musically i'm um i'm just trying to figure that out really <laughs> yeah i hear you i think yeah i hear that um yeah i mean it's i mean you is your process kind of um starts and stops or you sort of like an elliptical kind of process of working um uh or maybe maybe the better a better question is just like um like i tend to kind of work slow in the studio um yeah. i don't know i don't know what your process is in terms of kind of making music but um yeah just curious about that like you know um man i mean it's so many different ways uh one way that i don't really work in music anymore is i don't write stuff down so much anymore like i used to i used to you know it's always yeah. writing things on manuscript paper and uh now, because I have the recording set up, I usually just start with um, with from there. I mean, a lot of times I um, I listen to music a lot, yeah, like kind of all day, and uh, nice, and I'll kind of uh, I mean, I like sample. I mean, I like to sample stuff. We chop it up, and you know, sample it. And that kind of start from there. I mean, that's a big, uh, a big thing for me now. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. It's no, <laughs> no, no, that's that's cool. I mean, I was just, I was just sort of curious about that. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's kind of so much I want to, you know, you know, cover here. Um, I'm wondering if we should, Oscar, are we um, uh, ready for the the premiere of this video otherwise i have i mean i can you know i'd, I'd love to uh, watch the video and we can come back okay perfect let's do that i'm excited to see this um everyone check it out stop sharing harold thank you
Hi. There you have it, folks. The real <laughs> deal. Jeff Parker, thank you so much for that. That was beautiful. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, really, really amazing. Um, being in the space, hearing you play and amplify that entire museum is really incredible. Uh, that's definitely a first time for me to kind of experience something like that. Um, you know, for you know me to have a an artist like you to again, kind of riff on the work and improvise uh, in relationship to my work is really amazing. Um, you know, there's there's a there's a there's a um, interesting kind of background behind those things. You know, like uh, that last piece in particular. Um, you know, it's the, the title "Let the Shadows Into Play Their Part." So there's, you know, I, I like that. You know, I'm, in my work, I'm using these kind of veils or, you know, thinking about atmospheric qualities to mask or hide, you know, certain aspects, uh, or even with the first work that you, you, you know, were uh, playing in front of. Um, so it's really, really nice to kind of see your interpretation of, of all of this. Um, so, um, yeah, that was really, really amazing. Thank you. Um, I probably talked, uh, oh, I probably talked enough. I, I'm sure people are, who, who have tuned in are probably interested in asking you some questions, hopefully. Um, I'm sure, you know, there's some, you know, people that are curious about um, the collaboration and all that. So, um, yeah, are you up for some questions? Uh, sure, I'll try and answer them as best as I, <laughs> as best I can. <laughs> Um, Asuka, do you want me to kind of field some of those if there are, or do you um, have some questions I, um, in, on hand? I want to share my screen with um, some other. Oh, cool. Yeah. This is the, the full shot of the piece um, called Let the Shadows In to Play Their Part that you just mentioned, last scene of the video. So it's so people can see. Right. The Mm. Uh, and that is um, Harold. If you want to say a second, a few things about this piece, um, the material, yeah, an interesting close-ups of it during the video. Yeah, that would be great. An interesting connection between well, well, this piece. Um, you know, outside of you know, you know, Jeff and I both living in Chicago, having deep connections there, and then also now living in Los Angeles. We both spent time at the Headland Center for the Arts as artists in residence, not at the same time, but different periods, um, and made work. This was actually made uh, while I was an artist in residence there. And Jeff, you made a, a good portion of um, a Suite for Max Brown at the Headlands. Is that correct? Yeah, totally. Yeah, cool. absolutely. Cool. Yeah, so it's nice to see that kind of you know connection there. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, this is actually titled after a, a song by Burnt Sugar, the orchestra um, oh, wow. chamber, you know, which is fronted by, you know, Greg Tate. Um, yeah, you know, great. Really, yeah, really amazing musicians, Butch Morris, all those guys. So, but thinking about for sure um anyway but for those of you who are looking who haven't visited the exhibition this is kind of these are just a few installation views of the of the survey it's a 10-year survey which i'm you know very thankful to jamila um james for inviting me to, to to put this together so yeah uh, so i thought i'd include these so that people could see what the installation was like and is like and where it performed and someone actually is asking a question in the uh, in the Q&A box. Um, can, Jeff, can you speak to any work of Harold's in particular that really resonated with you? It seemed like when you were next to Hollis, the cages, uh, there was something intense happening, or maybe I'm projecting, that's what somebody said. So uh, I know we chose some spots and maybe you can speak a little bit about being next to these artworks. Sure. <clears throat> Yeah, the one in the cages definitely spoke to me. Um, I mean, it was kind of a, I mean, I, I was trying to compliment the work, really. I mean, my, my whole thing. Um, I was really trying to um, not just respond to it, uh, but to kind of, uh, 
I guess the word would be to uh, kind of commune with it. Um, just make it more about the, the whole experience. Um, yeah. I mean. <laughs> Great. Uh, we have a couple questions that are related to music. Um, someone named Frank Gruger is asking, with the recent New Breed stuff, you mentioned being influenced by hip hop production. I can't remember which hip hop artist I heard say this, but in talking about your freestyling, they said, if they live, ne they live never performed it, it don't of people before that's freestyle. Does that resonate with you or improve your work? Uh, are you pulling bits together or are you pulling bits together you might have worked through in practice or is it truly off the top of your head? Actually, the quote is, if you've never performed it in front of people before, that's freestyle. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I think I'm a, I'm a composer. I would, I would say, um, even when I'm improvising, I'm thinking about a much uh, bigger picture. Um, so I don't, um, yeah, I mean, I, I look at, look at every, everything compositionally. I mean, even when I was improvising with these pieces, I kind of, uh, I had a point A and a point B in mind. And I think, um, I think I was responding, I looked at my contribution to this as responding compositionally and, and not just kind of improvising off of, uh, I mean, I don't think anything is off the top of my head. I mean, you know, you work on music and you, I mean, I've been working on this stuff my whole life, you know, and you hear a moment and a, a moment, it's a, uh, it's a, a combination of all of that stuff, you know, practice, things that you think about. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that, I mean, Harold, I mean, being the brilliant artist that he is, I mean, I'm sure it's the same, same way for him. I mean, most of them, I think anybody who, who pursues a creative path, it's a, uh, always work, always, always a work. I mean, every, every, every moment you're working on stuff. So, I mean, yeah, that's my response to that. Very true, I agree to that. <laughs> um, we'll have time for maybe another question. Uh, somebody's asking you, Jeff, to what extent has your work become more personal because you're performing solo? Uh, how does it become more personal? Uh, personal. Personal. I mean, I'm just trying to be honest, you know, it's, uh, I think, I mean, solo performance, I mean, I, I think it's liberating because, uh, because it's just you. I mean, it's, you know, you don't, um, you're not relying on anybody else. I mean, and the work is, is really honest. I mean, I've, if anything, I think that my work is, uh, I'm not, um, yeah, I mean, I'm putting myself out there, I would say. I mean, that's personal. I mean, I guess the whole journey is personal. I don't know if it's any less, any more personal now than it ever was. But it's, uh, I mean, it's an art artistic pursuit. You're kind of presenting, presenting this work. I mean, I try and like, uh, I mean, one thing I do say as an artist is I try and um, try and keep my ideas uh, kind of insular. I mean, I try and and stay true 
to myself. And I, I mean, but I'm, I'm also a working artist. So I have, I mean, I do it for a living. So there's some, um, there's some, uh, I mean, you, you do things, I mean, kind of on demand, I mean, in a, in a way, which is hard. I mean, I kind of rely on technique to get me through things when I'm not so inspired. Um, Cause I mean, for me, I mean, it's hard for me to, uh, to always be inspired, you know? Um, I mean, you, I mean, you have muses and they kind of come and go, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's long winded answer, but <laughs> yeah. just trying to be honest, I would say. Yeah, I think I think to that point, uh, Jeff, I think that's what that's why the music really sticks, um, you know, not just the you know what you're putting into it, but like the the group of musicians that you're you know working with on a consistent basis. I mean, there's a really amazing group of folks um, that you are kind of working with on a consistent basis. So, yeah, the music really, really is soulful. I mean, I think, um, you know, at the beginning of, you know, maybe I think March kind of when the pandemic and all that rolled in. Uh, if I could make a very slight comparison here, but um, you know, I I, I put on um, you know Funkadelic's Maggot Brain. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know that and that song is insane. And um, oh man, that's crazy. And it, that song is sort of it's by you know Eddie Hazel is amazing, and it, it you know it sounds like the world is kind of both ending and being birthed at the same time. Right. But, <laughs> but I think for me, it's just like I was like listening to that sounds like wow this. All of the things that you had mentioned early on, like the, the kind of uh, the emotional, the kind of intellectual, like all these things really kind of sit uh, with uh, music in that way. And um, so anyway, I, I, um, I, I like that your, mu your music is constantly, you know, doing that and kind of pushing these, these, um, um, these motions forward with, with the work and what you want to do with it and really kind of expand sound and really, like you said, kind of exploit it in that way and, um, and learn something from it, right? right? Kind of continue to be inspired by that. And I think that's, that is the work, you know, create, being creative is work. That um, is, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, and I, I think it's kind of amazing. I think, I feel like you relate like your work, I feel like it's kind of, um, it's mashing stuff together kind of in the same way that that I, I feel like mine is. And I think that that's why I was just drawn to the, to the, to the, um, I was drawn to the, <clears throat> the exhibition. I mean, when I walked in, I was just kind of like, oh man, like it's really diverse, you know, it's like, uh multimedia stuff like mixed media and uh sculpture and then these kind of like photograms on glass and then it's, and it, and then it's everything is so powerful and you're kind of speaking to your uh cultural identity i mean it's, it's like i mean it's cool i mean i i was definitely like saw myself and could have relate could relate to the whole show in a, in a in a profound way for sure i mean and that, i was really excited to uh, to to respond to it no that was great thank you man i mean yeah there's um there's a lot of kind of um you know as artists we we, we pull from a lot i think uh not just you know the things that are either source material or things that really kind of help us get to the actual work um you know the creative process is really uh um elliptical in that way it's never i, I you know, at least not for me you know, i don't think it's like a direct you know path to, to something it really kind of takes time to kind of unpack things stitch things together um and really make, make it a kind of a cohesive thing um and i, I like it you know, coming from all these kind of fragments. And, you know, you and I had talked about uh, working with things that just don't fit sometimes. Um, sometimes you have to come back to it, you know, uh, you know, a lot later yeah. in life uh, and then it makes sense. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, on, on the New Breed and Sweet for Max Brown, 
both like there's one tune on the new breed that it took me like 10 years to write it <laughs> which one is that can you say are you um, like... um, oh yeah it's called how fun it is to hear whip oh, <laughs> and that there was worked. the tune it was like i mean it didn't i mean i wasn't like chipping away at it for 10 years but i had one idea and it was sitting around for 10 years and then i had another more recent thing and i married the recent thing with this 10 year old idea and then it made like a, a 10 year old song yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can relate to that man I, there was a photograph in the exhibition i took in 1999 in ghana west africa one of the probably wow. one of the oldest works but i didn't really make the thing or bring it to kind of formation until 2016. and that's a wow. long time i just didn't know how it fit right and um anyway so it's interesting to kind of hear that as well from you know another creative and yeah it happens man yeah it happens man. it's a whole it's a life yeah a life so life. so um you know i know we're going to be winding down a little bit but um um you know you, your you know album sweet for max brown came out in january you know you had toured it a little bit um and then we kind of went into lockdown this year i mean it's a really amazing album so those of you who are tuned in i really hope that you either you know are playing it or or get it um it's really really fantastic but um um i know uh i'm excited to see you perform live again i'm you know our, uh, our fellow friend colleen you know tuned in here she says she's excited mm -hmm. to see you perform again as well so what's up colleen yeah. um <laughs> and um yeah so what's what can we expect of um of, of jeff parker and the new breed uh i mean i don't know i mean i'll kind of I'm kind of waiting uh to really start writing some new music again i mean i kind of it i just kind of wait for it to hit me you know yeah i have some projects <clears throat> um some things that i'm working on and once i get time I mean, I don't really even know what I, what my uh, next move is going to be, really. Um, we'll see. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Um, well, Oscar, do we have room for one more? Or do we have time for one more question? Or are we, uh, I just want to be mindful of our sort of time, since you're a timekeeper here. Yeah, we are a little uh, over time, but um, if you want to take Another question, let's see. Uh, gosh, can you see the questions? Um, yes. Um, let's see. Oh, man, I didn't even yeah, see it's on here. Um, let's see. Consider it a time. Um, but yeah, pick a question, and then we'll wrap it up. Jeff, anything kind of point? Um, of interest to you there that you want to maybe or let's see um sorry there's just there's, there's quite a few here so yeah there's one that's funny it's like uh, they were asking about um whether you discuss what would be performed um in the video and i can say it was purely improvised but you know maybe you had some discussion before i mean it, it was improvised but uh i mean i asked harold to um i mean i asked him to uh, explain, uh, explain. I mean, he gave me a tour where he, where he, uh, he did, he described what was behind all of the work, and I was really considerate of, of things that he said. Um, I mean, like I said, I tried to compliment the work. I wasn't like I was responding to it, but I was kind of having a dialogue. With Mm -hmm. you know and some of that was based on things that that he had said to me mm -hmm. you know um and honestly uh now i don't remember what some of the things because <laughs> i just asked at the time and then i was just like okay i'll think about it. like he gave me some stuff to think about while i was playing and i don't i don't have the best uh long-term memory sometimes but it was you 
<laughs> yeah, I think for me, I was just like, you know, I wanted Jeff to just kind of go in and respond in his own way. You know, if he had questions about the work, you know, I would answer some. There was there were a few works in the exhibition that I spoke maybe a little bit more at length about. Um, um, and, you know, I, uh, you know, he had the opportunity to kind of walk through the exhibition by himself, kind of take it in. And then I walked him through the show and made a couple connections to some works um, in the exhibition. Um, and then really kind of talk about a few of the works um, specifically. Um, you know, I sort of address things like power and the body and, um, you know, speech and the voice and, you know, these kinds of subjects or concepts that are, you know, in the work uh, or thinking about things that resonate. And, um, and yeah, you know, I really wanted um, to, you know, I wanted just to kind of provide the opportunity for Jeff just to kind of riff on the, on, on the work in a way and really do his own thing. Um, and I think, you know, I'm really happy the way it, it turned out. And I think, it, like you said, it really kind of complemented in a really interesting way. Um, yeah. And I remember when you, when you kind of walked into the show, you were like, this is a vibe. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Um, you know, and, and it's interesting because the, the exhibition starts with um, the more recent work that I made, which uses a sound component that I you know, developed with the experimental sound studio and it uses a speech by an unidentified speaker. So it sounds like he's giving a speech of a kind of an existentialist crisis. And we talked a little bit about the sound of that. And, um, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I was really thinking about like how to sound and how, to, how does, how do our voices right now occupy a space? How do they uh, fill a space? How, you know, and I think that those ideas about the, the speech and identity and power and you know, those things for me were really resonating. And I think they're really important, particularly like right now, um, you know, there's just a lot of political strife in the United States. Um, um, but you know, the, the voice of this speaker really is kind of resonating throughout this exhibition. I mean, and that's just one component of a work. Um, you know, and then there are these other kind of aspects where the body is represented in these different ways. And so I wanted these things to kind of resonate, you know, throughout the exhibition. Um, and so, you know, I'm really happy that, you know, Jeff was able to kind of, like you said, complement that in a way for the sound. You know, you could see like he was playing and then he, that sound later then gets, uh, or it's later resonating in the space in a way, and then he's playing on top of that. And I think for me, that's really interesting. It's complex um, and it provides a way for the sound and the original thing to kind of expand. Um, anyway, I'm rambling here, but um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Maybe, maybe that answers a question there somebody yeah. had. I mean, there's so much more to cover, but thank you both. Um, thank you to all our collaborators on this. Been, yeah. Yeah. So everybody, uh, do check it out again and again on YouTube. we will also post it on our website and uh, definitely circulate it to friends. Um, I think a lot of people will be enjoying this piece, this record for years to come. So thank you both. Yeah, thank you, Oscar. Yeah. Thank you, Oscar, for, for making this happen. And Jeff, good to see you. I'm looking forward to catching up soon, man. Yeah, likewise. All right, Carol. And thanks, Stephen. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. Beautiful video. Take care, everyone. Okay, bye. Hey. See you guys.